Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the top-tier brewing stand. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. Time for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think, Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Hey, howdy, hey, my brewing brothers and sisters. Greetings, greetings. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember how many times now, or calculate how many times I've said, uh, my brewing brothers and sisters, or hey, howdy, hey. It's been a lot. It's probably a lot. Yeah. Well, and you know, they, that all came from, uh, that whole Disney thing, saying, hey, howdy, hey, that my daughter, oh, when yeah. she was real young, was into and so uh, and it's stuck unfortunately it's stuck for a long time all right so palmer you going uh, you're going to be at uh, the uh, australian uh, homebrewers conference here coming up right october right yep i've got i've got that coming up in october and i've got the argentinian homebrewers conference coming uh, up in august argentina yeah, that's going to be a blast. I met a lot of great people down um, when I went to Brazil uh, mm-hmm. last month. Mm-hmm. And uh, several of those people will be down in Argentina as well. Mm-hmm. It, um, you know, not too far drive, a couple hours, you know, from the southernmost state of Brazil. Um, I believe it's called Puerto del Sol mm-hmm. uh, down to um, Buenos Aires. No, oh, yeah, it's nothing. It's, it's right. It's like for us driving to Disneyland. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. Disneyland. They I'll drive roads, there every day. You know, so right. apparently so. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the uh, Australian Homebrewers Conference. I'm glad to see that is uh, still going well. You and I did the, yeah. the very first one. Uh, yeah. It's coming up on what uh, six years ago. Yeah, they're Four doing them every two yeah. years. I yeah. understand, yeah. and uh, so this will be be the third one. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, should be. I'm gonna do a. a I'm gonna do a talk on foam for them. Nice. Beer foam. Espuma, as they say in Brazil. Espuma. <laughs> you know what that sounds like? That sounds like an ad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wonder I wonder what our, our great uh, sponsor, uh, Blickman Engineering, uh, I, I bet you he could come up with some uh, some new, new innovative gadget to uh, improve your espuma. Yeah, foam enhancer. <laughs> do you, do you yeah. have, do you have a good espuma, JP? Um, I haven't heard any complaints, right, but right, we can get right. Taryn on the line and we can ask. You her. could always, you could always have better espuma. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you one way to but, get great espuma but is only um, once a night, though. You know, it's hard to use, do it. Use the Tower of Power from uh, Blickman Engineering because then you could control things like you know mash temperature. Uh, you could do step mashing, things like that. Things that uh, could improve the uh, foam positive nature of your words. Uh, improve retention your is a big is a key factor. Yeah, re- re- retaining your espuma. Yeah. Yes. All right. Only if you're a boxer. Long time before the fight. Right. Well, and uh, a good way to, to um, you know improve your homebrew. I think to innovate your homebrew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Wow. What timing? Satan just came out from the depths of your gut. <laughs> and spoke through. Let me you. say that again. Blickman engineering. Yeah. Like uh, Blackman at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe we have to isolate that and send it to him. Um, That's your ringtone every time he calls you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, another a great group of guys there, and they've uh, they've been supporting us for a long time. And, and actually, uh, by doing that, supporting you. If you like this show, if you enjoy it, if you uh, you appreciate the fact that you get the show uh, you know free of charge, uh, thank uh, Blickman Engineering for that. They've they've uh, been ponying up their bucks, so you don't have to. So 
uh, one of the best ways to to show your support for them. You know, go to their website, email them, uh, send an email. John Blickman, tell them how much you appreciate that they they uh, they stick with us and keep supporting us. Yeah. And while we're on the subject of Blickman, I just got to make another plug for the uh, Tower yes. Power is released. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's it really works well. It I've been, I've been using Spuma. the Banda unit for a while now, and uh, it really gives great temperature control to the mash um, and to your water, your hot liquor tank too. Uh-huh. But um, the he's really made you know um, I think some key technical advancements in uh, being able to control uh, mash temperature and ma- in the, with precision and so on. Um, yeah, I'm just tickled pink by it. You, you you set the temperature and you can just kind of walk away because it's it's working for you. Mm-hmm. So now that now that that's in production, uh, check it out. I know a lot of people are looking at it at NHC, and uh, it's really a slick system. Cool. Yeah, I think it's good stuff. And um, uh, one the thing I found most interesting about it is that you can hook that up to. It doesn't have to hook up to a top tier. You can hook that up right. to whatever equipment you're using. Um, it has the ability to control a lot of um, the other, uh, you know, uh, equipment out there. As long as you got a burner and, you know, I think water or whatever, you can uh, you can right. make it make yeah. it go. So very cool, very cool stuff. Very innovative, as uh, pretty much everything from Blickman Engineering is. All right, and we're doing a, a series of uh, going pro shows. So uh, this is this is show number two in the uh, Progasm uh, series, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, we've been uh, in the first show. We talked about just kind of the you know how you need to think Impetus. about brewing. You need to think about brewing, you know, as a business. You need to think about it as the beer sale business, not necessarily the beer manufacturing business. You need to understand what the commitments are, what you know, what 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 the time commitment is, and that um, uh, you can't you can't go into it with these you know rosy expectations. You know, you shouldn't, uh, you know, be totally down on it either, but you need to understand, you know, what's, what's, uh, what it's going to be like. So, uh, today we want to continue that series and, um, I want to talk about, um, uh, a few things. I want to talk about, you know, getting started, uh, you know, the, the thoughts behind getting started, the, the commitment that you need to make. And, uh, I think we might have time to, to get into the, uh, type of brewery. Uh, that you might choose to do because that affects a large portion of everything else you would do. Finance, location, equipment, um, <laughs> having some good beer, having some good food. Yeah, you're right over there? I'm burping. All yeah, right. Give me a break. I'm old. <laughs> I, uh, old people burp. You're off-gassing, that's all. I'm off-gassing. I'm, I'm fermenting, <laughs> and my airlock is just flapping open and closed. That's how I talk. It's all You're f- fermentation powered. Uh, <laughs> so um, you know the the type of brewery you're going to choose is uh, you know, quite important. All right, um, let's do this. So you want to take let's, a quick break and then come back? Yes. Or you want to? Okay. Well, I, I, yeah, yeah. Let's do a quick break. Need a, need a second to collect your thoughts. I think. Quick, well, I'll pour myself another beer. Actually, uh, okay. so. Let's do this. Let's all pour ourselves another beer. And when we come back, we'll get get into uh, more of uh, the progasm right after this. When you hear Blickman Engineering, think innovation, passion, quality, and customer service. Blickman Gear is designed by brewers to give you a sense of pride in your equipment. At Blickman, they know what makes brewing a pain and build gear that makes it fun. Like the intuitive beer gun, a completely different approach to filling bottles. The Therminator Wart Chiller, a new take on a plate chiller that's sized for flow, performance, and the high groundwater temps homebrewers face every day. The Brewmometer, a brilliant well thermometer design with brewing parameters right on the dial. The auto sparge, ultimate simplicity for preventing an overflow or running your mash tun dry. And much more, like the modular top tier brewing stand, conical fermenters, and their boiler maker brew pots. With more cutting edge equipment coming soon, keep up with the latest from Blickman at BlickmanEngineering.com and stay on the cutting edge. 
Have you ever dreamed of taking a beer tour through Belgium or Germany, but weren't sure how to even start? Or were afraid of missing the best places and events? Or maybe you just wish you had a local insider to take you around? Well, there's only one American tour company featured in the Good Beer Guide to Belgium, Belgian Beer Me. Your personal beer tour guide of Belgium and Germany is ready to go at BelgianBeerMe.com and at BambergBeerMe.com. Founder Stu Stewart personally leads eight tours a year to Belgium and Germany, visiting the finest breweries, beer cafes, abbeys, and festivals. Don't buy beer stuff. Buy a beer experience, birthday presents, stocking stuffers, and the best honeymoon ever. Couples or individuals love Belgian Beer Me beer tours. Your life is now. Sign up for a beer tour today at Belgian Beer Me or BambergBeerMe.com because all that beer is not going to drink itself. BN Army, Hop Tech has a great discount waiting for you. Do you often find it difficult to find specific specialty ingredients for your homebrew recipes? Well, listen to this. Hop Tech stocks 59 different grains to choose from, 39 varieties of pellet hops, and 8 kinds of whole leaf hops. And Hop Tech not only carries Y yeast and White Labs yeast for you, but also Fermentus, 04, 5, 6, 23, 33, and T58 Belgian yeast, plus Cooper's, Nottingham, and Windsor yeasts. Got your recipe ready to go? Pick up some great brew gear like new long and short sleeve shirts, games, and more. HopTech's new website is being updated every day with new items. If you don't see it, call the shop. They're open six days a week. BN Army and AHA members get a 10% discount, and active military personnel get 15% off. Visit HopTech.com today for great selection, great service, and a great discount. HopTech.com. A heretic is anyone who does not conform to an established attitude, doctrine, or principle. If you love craft beer, you're already a heretic. The very first thing we did when we started looking at the beers that we would brew, we got rid of all those recipes. We started from scratch. We've been pilot brewing the most creative things that we think of and the most interesting things. We've completely gone away from style. Heretic Brewing Company is opening this spring in Pittsburgh, California, and you can be a part of it. Visit hereticbrewing.com and facebook.com slash hereticbrew. Get the latest updates on the brewery and upcoming beers. Show everyone how you celebrate great beer as a heretic. It's a fairly powerful word. Being a heretic, that means you're not settling for ordinary beer. You are going with flavorful, creative, bold, interesting beers. A heretic is looking for the best beers out there. Be a heretic. Don't drink ordinary beer. Hi, this is Push from the Brewing Network, and I want to tell you about the Brewmaster's Warehouse and how you can get 10% off your next order. I'm a pretty techie guy, but I've never seen an online store like this. It's awesome. Go to brewmasterswarehouse.com and click on Brew Builder. You can whip up a custom recipe so easily even Sven could do it. Seriously, it's slick. You can share your recipe with your own logo and notes to the Brewmaster's database if you want. And the best part, it keeps a running tally of the beer you're building while you're doing it. Then, bam, click Buy Recipe, and your cart is filled and ready to go with helpful suggestions in case you forgot something. This thing is amazing. Brewmaster's Warehouse is run the way a home brewer would do it, with great service, fast turnaround, and six ninety nine flat rate shipping. Brewmaster's Warehouse and the Brew Builder blew me away. Check it out today at brewmasterswarehouse.com. I'm serious. And don't forget to put BN Army in the discount code box for 10% off your order. Check out brewmasterswarehouse.com. Cheers. Since the first time the Brewing Network microphones turned on, more beer was behind it. More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. Morebeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. Morebeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. Go to morebeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, more beer social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to morebeer.com today and take advantage of the buzz, the forum, the learning center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. Back 
back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer. This is Brew Strong. All right. I'm quite gassy today. Yeah, I thought you were going to, uh, you know, get everything out. I'm trying. That was a good one. <laughs> He's a fount of wisdom today. <laughs> I'm a fount of something. All right, so uh, getting started with your own brewery. All right, so... Uh, um, do you need a plan? Do you need any kind of plan to do this? Yes. <laughs> Thanks for the softball. Yeah. I think, I think um, you know, one of the important things is if you're going to, uh, you know, if you, if you really think you should be uh, opening a brewery, um, you need a uh, business plan. Business plan, marketing plan. You know, make something you know if you can't come up with a business plan you can't run a business i think you know you could run some simple business but selling beer is not quite that straightforward i think there's just a lot of aspects to it and i think you need to plan appropriately just and the most important thing is just the flow of money i have what a business plan is is a predicted money flow uh yeah, in a way, um, you know, it's it's goals that you set uh, for your for yourself for your business. Uh, you know what you want to achieve. You know, you, you predict out you know what you think you can do, what you want to do over a course of years, and it's a handy tool for a couple of reasons. You're not going to get any money from anybody without a business plan, unless they you know unless it's your mother and she thinks you're just the the brightest child in the world and will give you money anyways. Uh, so you need a business plan, and if you if you want to do something like uh, an alternating proprietorship, if you want to lease space in another brewery's building, in order to get your TTB permit, you need a business plan. They won't do it without that. So you need uh, to have some sort of plan uh, put together. And and one of the important aspects of that, I think, you know, once you write down that plan, it helps you do something really important, which is commit to the plan commit to doing this you have to you know 100 percent fully you know be behind your idea and have faith in what you're doing and you know make it work um you know if you're going to uh like i said in the the previous show if you're going to um do this oh i'll just do it in my spare time type of thing i don't think you're committed enough to make it successful Uh, <clears throat> so. Okay. Well, I mean, like, in terms of the business plan, I mean, so you plan out. Um, I guess you kind of figure out the size of your brewery too, mm-hmm, as part mm-hmm. of that business plan, right? Size of your brewery. Yeah. You know, you you'd put down things like, well, here's the kind of beers we're going to sell. Uh, I want to make you know all these creative you know different things, or I want to make you know the uh, best okay. IPA in the world. Uh, here's the people that are going to be involved. Here's where we're going to do it. Here's you know how we're going to do it. Here's how we're going to come up with the money. Here's the amount of money it's going to cost us. Here's the amount of money we're going to make off of it. All that stuff. You you plan that out. And people will say, well, I, I, I don't know that until it happens. Right. You're supposed to predict. You're supposed to give yeah. it your best guess based off of what you do know and industry standards and write down – Okay, if we did this, here's what we would make, and here's you know how we'll make that successful. And a marketing plan is good as well because that shows how you're going to go ahead and promote the business, how you're going to get that that beer to market. Because I found something very interesting with the financial people; they're more impressed with um, the distribution that you have for your beer than. I think the flavor of your beer, <laughs> they, um, yeah. you know, they, they, because they can put a, you know, a real value on distribution. You could make all the beer you want, but if you have no way of getting that sold, it doesn't matter how good it is and it doesn't matter how much you make. You're not going to make any money. If you have the ability to distribute a lot of beer and sell a lot of beer and you're only able to make a portion of that, that's okay. Because now all of a sudden, if you were to invest more money into the business, 
you have more beer, you already have the sales channel set up. Ah, okay, that makes sense. If you try and do it the reverse way, it can be uh, uh, real problematic if you make beer and can't sell it. There's a uh, someone wrote a business plan in the chat room. Yes. Yeah. Joan Brew says uh, he goes make beer, sell uh-huh. beer, get rich. Right. <laughs> and to me, that makes a lot of sense. Uh-huh. But you're uh-huh. saying that's not good. It's uh-huh. not a plan. It, it you, is. Okay. I think it is. Okay. All right. I'm going to go on that one. And and, and and here's the, so everybody can just copy that. And I think you're done. <laughs> Perfect. Show's over. But I, th- I think you know fundamentally that's what you're doing. You're um, you know start with those points and then fill in between it. Just expand a little bit. Maybe you can add, mm-hmm. and this is the way I did ours, is like, you know, you add more bullet points and say, okay, well, in that make beer um, category, what kind of things, you know, go under there? You know, who's making it? How are you making it? You know, what kind of equipment? And you just put bullet items for that. And just as you, you keep going over this thing, you keep adding more information as you figure out each little piece. And it's not a, a, a wasted effort. It's actually a great tool to help you crystallize what you're thinking in your mind and figure out in your mind that, that this will work. And then you have a solid plan in place. And you can find it very comforting to have that and say, okay, what I'm talking about isn't so crazy. you know, Because until you do that, you're thinking, uh, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to lose everything. And you put it together and put it on paper and look at the numbers. And you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I could I could make enough money to break even. That's not so bad. Um, you know, I'm not really paying myself a lot, but I'm breaking even, and you know, it really isn't that much beer. Okay, you know, I could I could make that much beer. I could sell that much beer, and you start looking at the numbers, and you start figuring out how much you have to sell your beer for, things like that. And it's very very helpful because when the time comes and you're into it, and you're you're trying to get uh, you know product out the door. That's not the time to start figuring all this stuff out. You better have this kind of mapped out. Now, your your business may not go exactly according to plan. That's okay. It's just kind of a guide. It's a, like kind of, you know, you, you keep adapting your plan. You review it every so often to see how well you did against your goals and, you know, where you want to keep an eye on where you want to get to. And yeah. um, you can go ahead and adjust your plan. That's That's perfectly acceptable. You can adjust it, you know, weekly if you want, but... A lot of businesses will do it, you know, every, you know, you could do it every quarter, every, you know, half a year, once a year. A lot of places will do it once every year or two years. They'll, they'll yeah. tweak their business. But, but as a specific, Jamil, like I remember you telling me that you were going to be a packaging brewery. And mm-hmm. so you were looking at kegs, mm-hmm. you know, to package your beer and sell. And then, and then uh, when it came time, I mean, had you initially thought that you were going to go to the bottles, you know, your first year? Or did you kind of, had you put that in uh, as something to do in the future, and was so that was a modification of your business plan, perhaps. Well, by doing the business plan, I realized that I had to do bottles in order to be profitable, or you ah. have to be at a huge volume in order to be profitable. That's one of the mm-hmm. great things about a business plan. You look at these numbers, and you're like, "Oh, wait, so I can't just sell draft and be profitable?" No, <laughs> you can't unless you're selling at retail. Was that, a, um, was that a function of you not owning your own place, or was it just even if you like even if you have the own, your own brewery now right. and you're getting your own spot, or is it still going to be the same where you're going to have to bottle in order to be profitable? Right. So here's here's how it works out. Um, you know, we got a great deal uh, working with EJ Fair, uh, sharing the building with them, and that has made our costs much lower. So we're actually profitable because they're helping us out that way. If um, if we didn't have that, we'd be in a much worse situation. <laughs> and in order to be profitable with just draft, you need to sell about or produce about, um, you know, 3,000 barrels to kind of get to that point. So 3,000 barrels... If you're doing just draft, but if you bottle, you can be profitable in as little as like a thousand barrels. Wow, thousand to fifteen hundred. That's crazy because of all the extra work you have to do with all right. you and know the cost ordering the labels bottling. and right. the, and and the, even the the caps and you know, to, the cost of bottling and right. the time to shift everything around and well, label design and 
and for us, you know, 53% of our beer goes into bottles, and that's 72% of our profit. Wow. Yeah. It's a huge, huge, uh, you know, plus because you're selling it, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in smaller amounts. People take, you know, less of a cut from that, and, um, you know, it becomes uh, actually quite profitable. And we, we actually we use a mobile bottling service that um, uh, they come in. They have a, a bottling line that's dedicated to, you know, uh, we get the same bottling line every time, same r- person running it. So it's almost like having your own employee in bottling line. Mm. It's very consistent for us. And um, that helps a lot. Uh, but, you know, our initial outlay is much lower. We didn't have to come up with all the money for a separate bottling line and an employee yeah. and all that stuff. So that that can help. So, you know, those types of things in the business plan are, you know, very important. So, uh, you know, I would say that our initial business plan um, had us, you know, brewing, I think, 400 barrels the first year and 1,200 the second year and, you know, um, like 1,800 the, you know, the, or no, um, 3,000 the year after that. So I thought we'd have, you know, closer to three years to get out of the, the building we're at and set up a new brewery. But, uh, you know, that was according to the business plan. And that was based on other breweries that grew quite rapidly, uh, what they had told me. And the reality was in six months, we were already at maximum capacity. So we immediately had to start finding another place. So, again, you know, the business plan, it was a good business plan, I thought. But, you know, things change and you have to adjust uh, based off of you know what you uh, you know what you experience, is it fair to say though that you wouldn't have gotten to that level of growth without that business plan? You know, saying to yourself, "I need to get uh, these kegs and the this hops and all that sort of thing." I mean, mm-hmm. kind of planning it out enabled you to you know seize that growth and and run with it, right? Right. It, it helped me be prepared for growing. Because I knew what I would need at each stage of the way in order to, you know, support growth. Because I had already mapped that out. You know, number of kegs per account, number, uh, you know, amount of uh, materials per barrel, you know, employee hours per per barrel. And, you know, as the number of barrels went up, I knew, hey, you know, I need to get more kegs. I need to do this. I need to, you know, get more fermenters. I need to, you know, it was all very mapped out. So... Uh, we just ran through the plan much faster, but it was really good having that plan. If I didn't, I think I would have been, you know, in, in a whole world of hurt. So it was time well invested. All right. So the other things you're going to need to do when you're getting ready to, to start this up, you, you first, you, you make your commitment. You're committed to doing this. You're not going to do it half time. You've got your spousal support, all that, or, or you will end up with spousal support. Uh, payments. Uh, then you you make your plan. You need to figure out your type of brewery, your financing, uh, the location of your brewery. Uh, you need to acquire equipment, your licenses and permits, and then lastly distribution. So uh, a considerable amount there, and we'll we'll go over that in the shows uh, coming up over the over the uh, over the weeks. Progasm. Yeah. On the progasm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But I want to kind of go into the, that whole commitment thing again. Uh, you need to commit fully to make this successful. Again, part-time is not uh, a successful plan. Everybody needs to be on board. Your spouse, your family, everybody that's gonna you're in your life that is somehow involved needs to be on board. And anybody that is going to provide money needs to be on board. And a very important thing. When people give you money, then all of a sudden they think that, you know, they have a right to tell you what to do. <laughs> you have to be very careful if you're going to take money from people. And not that you shouldn't listen to them, because people who have made money in one form or another, usually they made that money because they actually know things and they've learned the hard way and that's how they, you know, they were successful. So it's always good to listen to those people, but you need to make sure that you're going to have a single leader, a single visionary as to what your brewery is going to be. You know, you need to, you know, uh, 
you know, come up with that that thought and live that and and be the the person always you know driving and and uh, you know pushing towards that goal because if you have too many people with too many visions, I don't think it works out well. I think one one vision, one one idea of you know what you're going to be. I think the Brewing Network successful because Justin had a vision and an idea of how it was going to play out and and he's been the driving force and there's a lot of times when I think you know all of us come up with ideas and he's like no no it doesn't really fit in the vision that he has not that he's not listening but he's got a vision and he's executing on that vision that's why he's successful same thing on a brewery you know if uh, people tell you oh you should make you know IPA and this is not in your vision if I'm telling you that's the easiest way into the marketplace but it's not your vision, then don't do it. You know, go with your vision. <laughs> you know, be you got to be happy at what you do, but realize that you know if you fail next year, you got to have you got to have you know the business reality around your vision too. You know, it's like oh, I want to be the first person to flap my arms and fly to the moon. It's like great vision, but not very realistic. So it's it's kind of a balancing act. Well, you know, and and that's the, it's a good point because that's the only way that you're going to have the passion to see it through. Mm-hmm. And the passion to lay awake at night worrying about it and the passion to spend 20 hours a day if needed or 18 or whatever um, to follow through and the passion to, um, I don't want to say defend your choice to, mm-hmm. to the people who love you or like your spouse mm-hmm. or whatever, but to, to, to keep them and like, yeah, no, we, we're, we're here. Check out this. We're almost there. We're doing this. If you don't believe in it, then you shouldn't be doing it. If you think, uh, go, again, go back to homebrew shops. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a, a few homebrew shops that have been in Gom. Uh, come and gone who uh the owners have said this is this is how i'm going to get rich this Mm -hmm. is my my you know this is my nest egg this is my retirement and uh no no (laughs) you haven't done your homework if you think you're going to get rich selling hops and malt to people at two ounces a time it's not going to happen right you need to switch to something illegal (laughs) right it's it's a um it's a passion it's Mm -hmm. very much a passion industry and if you don't have it on Mm -hmm. homebrew or commercial um don't do it I, I think that's an excellent point and, and well said. Yeah, you, if you, you know, don't believe in the vision, then your role becomes, you know, you're just working your ass off for nothing. If you believe in the vision, then, you know, at least, you know, you have something where you're passionate about it. You want to you wanna see it happen and make it a reality. Then it's much easier to do those long, brutal days. It's much easier to... Uh, you know, when, when the chips are down and when everything seems like it's failing around you, which will happen, I guarantee you that. You'll have these moments where it's like, oh, it's all going to shit. And everybody's freaking out. You need to be a leader. You need to be a visionary. You say, hey, no, this is going to work out. Here's how we're doing it. Here's what's what's going to happen. We'll fix this problem. We'll move on. You know, so much of business is not, you know, uh, collecting money and, you know, yelling at people. It's um shopping for a jet right shopping right. for a jet oh, yeah. well, <laughs> you're looking at my uh my uh, web browser history is that, that what's going on <laughs> it's my private stuff yeah. it's a g6 do you know where about it yeah um but uh it's it's really more you know solving problems and you know being a leader for folks and saying you know yeah i, I see the problem here's how we're going to resolve it or you know we're going to work through it and giving people the extra you know, hope and leadership that that helps carry them through stuff that they hate. You know, because everybody else out there, you know, they may share your vision or believe in your vision, but, mm. you know, you have to believe in it to a point where you're going to, you know, pull through with it, pull everybody else along with you. And, uh, you know, I think, JP, you, you, you said it really well that, uh, you know, it's a, a thing of passion. Mm. And uh, without that passion, you're going to be pretty miserable. Passion won't carry you through the whole thing. <laughs> that's true. So uh, that's true. Yeah, you need to you need to have that leader, that visionary, uh, but don't have more than one. Um, mm-hmm. You know, have people. You know, if you need additional leaders, then they report to the supreme leader, mm-hmm. and uh, right. you know they're you know they're you know down. You got to have a structure to that because uh, I think it it becomes quickly becomes unwieldy. And, you know, make sure you write that, that business plan and that marketing plan. Without it, I think you're screwed. All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, I want to talk about the, the type of brewery, how you would um, 
decide one way or another what uh, type of brewery you would open. So, a short break and back after this. Nico, listen, our lawyers said that we had to do this for one hour, and after this, we don't have to talk to each other for three more months until the the next meeting. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm supposed to have more lines. I'm the professional. Hey, it's Sully. And I'm Nico. And we opened the 21st Amendment nine years ago at 563 2nd Street in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park, to make great beer and have a great time doing it. That's right, because to us, the 21st Amendment is more than just the right to make beer. It's the right to experiment, to be innovative, and just do things differently. And so now, we're putting our craft beer in cans. That's right, cans. You can find our world-famous Heller High Watermelon Wheat Beer and Brew Free or Die IPA throughout California and Alaska. And now it's also available on draft at select accounts in the Bay Area. So next time you're at your local neighborhood pub or good beer store, be sure to ask for 21st Amendment in cans. Because everyone likes it in the can. Tasty Crack Cans. Tasty Crack Cans. Seven short minutes of California State Route 101. There lies a secret oasis for all craft beer lovers. It's relax, grilling, and chilling, bro! Relax, grilling, and chilling in Hollister, California is a craft beer lover's dream come true. Not like a creepy JP dream. Like a normal craft beer lover's dream. 30 taps pouring your favorite craft beer. Visit Relax Grilling and Chilling on Facebook to see the most up-to-date beers and what's on the grill. Hey, let us grill so you can chill. Angus burgers, filet mignon, and ribeye steaks, dogs and sandwiches, and more. Great food, great beer in a place where you can kick back and relax. Tuesdays are brewery nights. Come in to celebrate, and you're not limited to enjoying your favorite brew at the restaurant. Relax Grilling and Chillin' has beer to go. Relax, grillin' and chillin'. Let them grill so you can chill. Hi, I'm Jamel Zanishef, and in addition to my work on the Brewing Network, I write the style profile column in every issue of Brew Your Own magazine. Hi, I'm Sean Paxton, and when I'm not prepping for the home brewed chef on the Brewing Network, you can find me writing articles on how to cook with your home brew for Brew Your Own magazine. Greetings, Cretans. This is John Palmer, and when I'm not writing for Brew Your Own, I'm reading it. John Palmer, Sean Paxton, Jamil Zanishev. If you love listening to them on the Brewing Network, you'll love reading their articles, tips, and recipes in the pages of Brew Your Own magazine. Join Jamil, John, and Sean eight times a year in Brew Your Own. And when you subscribe to BYO on the Brewing Network website, half of your subscription price goes right back to the BN to support great beer and food programming. So sign up for Brew Your Own magazine through the BN website today so you can listen and read. Read your way to better homebrew. Williams Brewing is your online resource for prompt delivery of quality home brewing supplies. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Cut hours off your brewing sessions by using one of our 11 varieties of famous Williams malt extract. Our Williams Belgian Pale Extract is mashed with pure Belgian two-row malt and a small percentage of Belgian wheat malt for an authentic Belgian character you just can't get from other extracts. Or check out our unique fermenters, two-and-a-half-gallon kegs, paintball tank-based draft beer equipment, bottling aids, and much more. We even have our own line of precision hydrometers. Go to williamsbrewing.com to browse our vast selection. That's williamsbrewing.com. Orders placed by 3.30 p.m. Pacific time ship the same day. Brewing is easy. The Williams way. This summer, Reed Antis from New York won fully paid tuition to the 2012 World Brewing Academy Concise Course in Brewing Technology thanks to Lalamon and Ansar and their 2012 Beer School Contest. It was so much fun, they're doing it again. Announcing Danstar's Beer School 2013 Contest. From now until December 13th, 2012, every time you use Lalamond or Danstar Premium Brewing Yeast, your empty packet is your entry for a chance to win a professional brewing course in 
in the Beer School 2013 contest, Lalamond will sponsor two lucky winners, one professional brewer and one home brewer, in a random drawing for fully paid tuition to the 2013 World Brewing Academy web-based concise course in brewing technology worth nearly $4,000. This course will change the way you think of beer and brewing. Get your official entry form and rules at danstaryeast.com. Get brewing with the Dry Yeast Advantage from Lalamond and Danstar. Visit danstaryeast.com. Back to your hosts, Jamil Zanashef and John Palmer. Putting the testicles in technical. This is Brew Strong. All right, we're back. Enjoying the lovely, lovely afternoon in Martinez. In no, not, oh, not creepy nice. monkey, creek monkey, right? Well, yeah. creepy <laughs> monkey too. I had some lady on the phone today say, uh, "Oh yeah, you're over there on Main Street in Martinez." Martinez. Yes, <laughs> that's right. It's Mar- It's pronounced Martinez. Martinez. Martinez next to the lovely creek monkey. Yeah. Yes, uh, and uh, speaking of lovely, uh, the AHA. Don't forget, uh, support your your AHA, uh, the American Homebrewers Association. I'm a member, lifetime member. Uh, JP, you remember? Or you can't afford it along no, with air conditioning I used and to be a, cable TV. Well, I used to be a member uh, when Morbier was paying for my subscription. <laughs> you can't afford it now. Um, I'm 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 trying to budget it because I really believe in what they do, and and I always feel bad going to NHC without being one. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying to figure it out, but um, yeah. Right. You need like regular good employment. <laughs> do I need that? <laughs> I do need that. <laughs> Beardy was telling me about uh, how much he sweats uh, since you won't run the air conditioning. He's a lying <laughs> sack of hair. He is. <laughs> Every time I tell well, him, I said, I said, you know, he can't afford to run the air conditioning. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, and he's moving out, so I can afford yeah. it even less now. Right. Yeah. It's even worse. He's moving out. Yeah. Well, and did I you told, guys have a fight? Did I, you, you know. Well, over the air conditioning, apparently. <laughs> I told him I was like, look, I you know I run the air conditioning when it gets to like eighty five. Right. Because once otherwise, your, I'm just wasting your it. Nuts stick to the couch. Well, I have an inefficient and you house, can't tear free. So I'm fine with it. And he goes, "I don't care. It's fine. I don't mind it." Yeah, he's not going to complain. Yeah, of course yeah. not. No. But meanwhile, he's talking behind your back. Uh, you should hear what he said about you. I know. I'm sure he's that kind of person. I think that's it. He's that kind. He's that kind of person. Backstab. Well, you don't find those kinds of people at the AHA. No, I'll that's true. That. No. If what you find is really supportive people that uh, are doing everything they can to. Uh, make the hobby better for everybody to expand the hobby and uh you know they they watch out for your interests in washington uh you know a lot of uh other hobbies and interests they have uh you know uh some of them will they'll have uh, representation in washington and a lot of them don't need it but i think home brewing is one that does need it because you're dealing with alcohol, and you see how weird people get about alcohol when you try and uh, if you listen to the moonlight metery um uh, show on the session, and Michael Fairbrother was talking about how, how all his neighbors were fine when he was brewing beer and they were coming over and drinking. But the minute he wanted to make some money off of his skill and open a commercial endeavor, yeah, I mean that wouldn't have affected them at all. No, all of a sudden they're like, no, 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 you can't do that because who knows what. <laughs> and you know, people just get real weird about alcohol. So if you want to keep uh, home brewing legal. And, uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, kind of a watchdog out there to keep an eye on things. Uh, I think that's a very important thing. Plus, you get that great magazine, Zymergy. You get uh, the, the AHA conference, which is yes. absolutely fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, you get the pub discount program, a lot of other things that they, they do. They, they It actually helps them. Uh, you know, they've got, uh, you know, the, the Brewer's Publications, a lot of great books, John Palmer's book. Uh, uh, we've done the Our East book, book and the, uh, the Brewing mm-hmm. Classic Styles. So it's a great organization. If you go to thebrewingnetwork.com, there's an AHA link there. If you sign up through that, you actually some of that money goes back to the, the Brewing Network, too. So you can support two great organizations with, with uh, one one swipe of the credit card. It's like 38 bucks. Chunk goes to the Brewing Network. Chunk goes to the AHA. And, uh, you know, you make everybody happy and, and helps true. support home brewing. So it's a, it's a good thing. I'm Like I said, I'm a lifetime member and, uh, and uh, wouldn't be without it. I want to be one. Wouldn't you like to be a member too? 
The program is already off the rails, I think. We need more songs from, <laughs> from John Palmer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I can't claim credit for that one. That was the Dr. Pepper commercial. The yeah, dulcet well. tones of rock candy singing away. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so type of brewery. Now, this is, you know, I think a, a critical part that a lot of people don't really think about. You know, they, they have an idea or or they don't really understand what kind of decision they need to make. So I break it down, you know, traditionally people break it down into, oh, brew pub or a microbrewery or, you know, this or that or, you know, but I'll be a brewery with a tasting room and food or I'll be a brew pub that <laughs> packages kegs and, you know, there's there's some gray gray areas there. I think you need, though, to focus on how you're going to uh, what's your primary focus as a brewery so i divide breweries up into two things now after and and i i i only learned this through um you know experience over this last year or so and trying to get the new facility open and, and choosing a new location for the new facility um there's a direct consumer focused brewery right you're going to retail pints to the consumer and there's breweries that focus on wholesale, right? Or there's wholesale, and there's um, retail, and there's direct to consumer. Okay, wholesale is selling your beer to a distributor that later sells it to a retailer. Uh, as a self-distributing brewery in the states where you can do that, like in California, we can self-distribute. When we sell beer to the to the retailer that is going to sell to the consumer, that's selling to retail. So you can sell to wholesale, sell to retail, and you can sell direct to consumer. So the retail and wholesale that's that's a brewery where you're you're focused on, very much as a packaging brewery. And that's what we are at Heretic. Uh, direct to consumer um, that is more focused on the brew pub and things like that. That's uh, more EJ fair. Uh, so, you know, they focus on that. We focus on the packaging. And so, you know, you can you can have whatever facility, but I think, you know, making this distinction is very important because it, it guides you in a lot of your other choices. So you need to kind of decide that up front. Um, you know, are you looking at, you know, selling your beer uh, to the wholesale? You you know, you give them a cut of the profits, but, um, you know, you make a lot more beer and you have the potential of um going uh you know big you could be you know a national brewery you could you know distribute you know a hundred thousand barrels half a million barrels you know you could become like you know sierra nevada that doesn't stop you from having a pub or a restaurant or tasting room but when you're making your choices you need to focus on you know choices that will further your your packaging plans yeah because that that mon- up front, that initial money is critical. You know, so you're, what you're saying is mm-hmm. um, make these make these decisions wisely so that you can get the most bang for your buck. Well, and you know, uh, we'll talk about location later on. But you know, do you need an industrial park space um, where you know rent is cheap? There's good truck access. You know, we're looking at places where we need good truck access, and you'd be surprised how many places don't have good truck access. Uh, where we are now, the truck stops, and these full-size trucks, they stop and block the entire street for half hour at a time. And it's kind of a little side street, so it's not nearly as bad. But uh, we also looked in uh, lovely downtown Martinez, and uh, you know, they're like, yeah, you know, you know, the trucks could stop in the street. It's like, not for half hour at a time in this city. You would, you know, People would freak because you know, the streets are real narrow. It would completely you know, grind everything to a halt. Yeah. So not not really for us, but if you're doing a retail, you know, or, you know, direct to consumer, more of a pub, then you know, downtown Martinez would be excellent, you know, because you'd have all the, uh, uh, you know, foot traffic and the retail location. It's a beautiful, you know, city to walk around in. Um, great, you know, buildings with old buildings with character could be fantastic. Great place for a pub, but not such a great place for a packaging brewery. So, you know, it's those kind of of things. And, uh, you know, or, you know, you can find, let's say you find a place that's, uh, you know, uh, you know, got great retail 
if that's not you know your key focus, you're paying a lot more for that building than you really need to if you're going to be a packaging brewery. So you need to kind of decide up front what that's going to be. Um, anytime you try and do both in one location, you're giving up one thing or another. You're either you know compromising the retail aspect of it, or you're compromising the packaging aspect of on as far as you know location goes. You're also compromising um, uh, you know based on financials, things like that. It's uh, it can be uh, a real real problem for you. And that's fine, I guess, if that's in your business plan. Like if you plan what? on that and and you you want to try to draw some of it, right? I mean, that's mm-hmm. you stick no. to your business plan, or 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 is you'd never want to sacrifice. You want to be one, or figure out what you are, right? And, and then, then the other that. the other is nice to have. Okay, so right. your efforts should be. And you know, I you know, I thought about this. I talked to various people, and everyone's like, "Oh, you know, you got to have a tasting room. You know, you make you make money off the tasting room." And so I was looking at locations. I'm like, "Well." This doesn't really have a good tasting room <laughs> location or retail. And it's like, well, I talked to Yusuf at Ballast Point, and they have a, a nice tasting room there. And, you know, it's constantly busy. They just recently expanded the number of taps that they have. I was in there. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to find, you know, buildings that would allow me to do good tasting room space. And actually, if you go to Ballast Point, you realize the parking really sucks. Oh, they're way out there, yeah, too. And they're way out there. There's yeah. no place to sit. No. Um, it's horrible. Everybody still goes out there. But... Um, but how long did it take for that to happen? Right. right. Yeah. And the other thing was, he told me, he said, yeah, tasting room revenue is nice, but, you know, 99% of our beer goes out through the loading dock. You know, we don't, you know, it's it's a small drop in the bucket. Yeah. And he said, are you a packaging brewery or are you a brew pub? Which one, or are you a tasting room? Which one are you? And, you know, that crystallized it for me there. I'm like, you're yeah. right. You know, I need to stop. You know, trying to be all things to all people, I need to focus, be much clearer as to what I'm doing with my business and how I envision my business five years from now, ten years from now, whatever it would be. I need to, you know, see that through. And all the other ancillary, you know, sources of revenue, they're nice to have, but don't let that slow down or, you know, distract you from the main focus. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing a, you know, a brew pub or something like that or a tasting room, you know, don't get distracted by, oh, you know, if we bottled beer and we could start selling to the stores and we could start, you know, and trying to do that up front, get the, the brew pub working properly, get, build some notoriety and then, you know, some revenue and some money. And then, you know, maybe you look into bottling. Problem is, if you buy a building that's big enough to put a bottling line, a keg washer and all this stuff in it, you know, uh, for production, you're going to either be in a really bad area for a brew pub or you're going to spend a huge amount of money on something you don't need up front. So, you know, you need to be very careful of, of making that choice. And not yeah, to those say, are very good points. Yeah, you can't, you know, you could always do the other part later on, but you need to, you know, just drive on that one facet of your business and get that successful uh, before you, you go, go crazy. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, cover was uh, contract brewing, alternating proprietorship, and traditional. So that's the other thing people think of when you're when they're talking about uh, types of brewery. And um, you might look at it this way: um, contract brewing is uh, kind of like taking a cab, right? Anybody taken a taxi before knows that you get in. And, you know, the condition of the cab inside is really not your call. If the interior of the cab's dirty, oh, well. If the interior of the cab's nice and clean, great. You know, smells nice and fresh, okay. Or, you know, does the guy have a uh, raging B.O. and there's vomit from the last person in the back seat, right? I took a cab like that the other day. <laughs> it smelled like um, underpants. It was real gross. Nice. For nice. 20 minutes. Right. It's actually the cab after we had breakfast when Push oh, really? went to the brewery. The one I got in was really nice. Oh, the one we we waited twenty minutes in the rain. First of all, <laughs> oh really? And then it was just it was the I think the most horrible smell I've ever smelt in a confined space that wasn't my own. I'm so glad I took the first. Cab. Oh man! I'm like, oh, you guys go ahead. And they're like, no, no, you need to get back. Go ahead and take it. <laughs> it was really good. Mine was nice and clean, brand oh, new. Wow. It was like a, uh, you know. Whatever. Uh, hybrid and yeah, everything. all Priuses up there. It's weird. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no. 
So are you um, saying breweries can be like that too? Yeah, right. If, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. lucky, it could right. be you. Right. So, uh, and when you get it, you take a cab, you get in, you tell them where you want to go, and then it's up to them as to how fast they drive, how slow they drive, what route they take, um, you know, how many pedestrians they hit along the way, and when they get you to your destination. You know, maybe you'd prefer to be, you know, up closer to the door or farther away or on this side of the street or that. But, you know, as long as they get you close, uh, you still have to pay them. You don't really have a choice. So you can talk to them. And if you get a great cab driver, maybe they'll listen to you and let you direct how fast to drive on a certain street and what streets to take and where to turn and all that. Um, That would be a good contract uh, situation, right? Um, But... I think it's possible to get into a situation where you don't have enough control over what you're doing. And um, that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of contract brewing because you, you may not have enough control. For me, I'm so freaking... What do, controls you know, do you typically have when you contract brew? I mean, do you, do you set a price for the batch? Right, or? there's a price and then... Um, you know, you you know set specs for what kind of beer you want to brew. Uh, you can kind of give them a recipe, and then you know they brew it for you. And then you know if the beer doesn't match the specs that you set, and it's got to be a range of specs. You could spec something you know highly precise, but they're not going to agree to that. So you, you know it's like, well, you know, you're within a few gravity points. Mash temperature was in a few degrees. You know, this, that, the other thing. And if it doesn't turn out exactly right, well, you still have to pay for it. If it's close, you have to pay for it. If it's, you know, wildly different than what you're anticipating or terribly infected or something like that, then you don't have to pay for it usually. Um, you know, you yeah. want to have that all that in your contract. What um, if it just tastes bad? Right. Well, that's subjective. They'll say, well, that's what you told us to make. No. Oh. So it's always good to have a you know, initial example that you can show them as here's the standard here's what we're trying to make and here's the recipe that makes that and then you know they will try and you know dial that in but it can be tricky and then you know you you know the i've got a friend who's contract brewing and you know the brewer changed on him you know the brewer that they had left and you know he's working with a different brewer and the beer is turning out different it's like, whoops, that's, you know, just kind of the way it goes. You, know, you just don't have that control. Hmm. So what's, what are some of the positive things of the contract brewer, though? Well, I think the positives are, you know, your um, capital outlay is much, much less. You know, you don't have to buy any equipment. You don't have to hire any employees. You can do it. Um, you know, your your batch expense is much higher. Um and it kind of uh, amortizes all that stuff, the equipment and everything, into the cost of the batch. So, in the long run, you're probably paying about the same as you would otherwise, you know, plus a little bit. Well, it's a more expensive way to produce beer, but you don't have to come up with a huge amount of cash. Now, you still have to come up with, you know, whatever it's going to be for the batch, you know, $10,000 for the batch of beer. You have to come up with, you know, probably your own coopers, your own kegs if you want to do draft. You have to come up with your own, you know, label designs and all that stuff. You still have to do all your um, business plan and your your business license. You need to figure out how to distribute it, all that stuff. What about your, your TB licensing and so on? Is that different or the same? That's much easier because you're essentially, you're not the manufacturer. You're having it manufactured for you. So. Okay. Um, you're using the TTB license of whatever brewery you're you're brewing at. So uh, much easier in that in that respect. And you know the breweries generally um, they'll you know they should be taking care of the um, label approvals for you and things like that. And you have to get every label approved um, that you put on a package of beer, whether it be kegs or bottles and. Um, you know, it's some effort. If you don't know what you're doing, that can be, you know, something. Uh, but, you know, so contract brewing, less control, uh, less initial outlay. Um, for me, it's not enough control. I'm highly anal, and uh, I just uh, just can't allow 
uh, you know, that level of control not to be. Now, it would I, never work for you. I, I think, think some contract breweries, they'll let you come in and actually, you know, essentially be the employee that brews the beer. And I think if you're doing that, that, that might be better. Um, but again, you know, they've got their beer to brew and, you know, they're, I don't think they're quite as worried about you. So if you have a good friend that'll do that for you, that might be something nice. Uh, or if you get some, you know, incredibly kick-ass brewery to, to do it for you. Um, you know, Dick Cantwell was talking about how um, they were having a New Belgium contract brew some of their beer for him. If you can get New Belgium to contract brew it for you. You're doing pretty like, good. Yeah, then it's like, yeah. okay, that... I think that'll work. Yeah. I think that'll work. But not, I, think, I, think, I don't think you have to worry so much about quality then. Yeah, but not Peter and John's, you know, magic brewery in the mountains of somewhere. Right. That'll be fine. You guys will do the Eagle Right. Cousin. I totally, totally trust you. Yeah. So uh, that becomes an issue. Um, now, alternating proprietorship, and that's what uh, the TTB calls it when two breweries share the same space. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean anything other than that. Um, now it can mean anything from that up to almost it's essentially contract brewing. It depends on how, you know, what kind of agreement you have with an alternating proprietorship. It's, uh, you have to have your own TTB license, all your licenses, TTB, ABC, all that stuff. You have to have your own ingredients. You have to, uh, you know, brew the beer yourself and you're your own brewery. And in a situation more like ours, we're pretty much completely independent from the. We're, we're completely independent from the other brewery. The thing that we share is building space, and we share the use of the uh, mash tun and um, uh, you know kettle, and um, we share costs of things like uh, CO two. Uh, we share a keg washer, so everything else we buy all our own you know equipment and material and kegs and our own employees. So we're completely independent. We just share space to, to save costs. Now, it is possible to, um, uh, you know, set up and have the host brewery do more for you. Essentially, so you're kind of getting around the, the whole thing. You could, you could set up an alternating proprietorship. Again, you need to get your own TTB license. And you actually have to file more paperwork in showing how you're alternating the building structure and, you know, who takes ownership of the building when you're brewing, et cetera. Um, and we'll get into that more when we get into licensing and all that. But uh, the the thing is, you, you know, you have to have your employees uh, brew the beer or you have to brew the beer. You can hire uh, the host brewery's employees to brew the beer for you if you want. But you have to directly employ them. You have to set up for paying employees and paying all your payroll taxes and everything. But you could you could go ahead and you know employ those people, I guess, or you could contract with them to to work for you, I guess. And then um, you uh, can purchase ingredients from the host brewery. You have to purchase it before you brew. You can't purchase it after. You could rent space in their fermenters. Uh, so you could do all this stuff and really, you know, almost be like a contract brewer, but technically call it an alternating proprietorship if you wanted to. I just don't see the value to that. I think you're going through a lot of extra time and expense getting all your licensing and all that Sounds to, like you know, seed control to somebody else. Um, Sounds like a lot of work. Right. Like a lot of forethought and a lot of... Right, I no, would not thinking on your feet, kind of thing. Yeah, the the, the re, if you're going to do that, just contract brew. Yeah, um, the reason to to do a uh, alternating proprietorship or a shared lease on a building, you now the brewery is that you can have full control. You're a fully independent brewery. You brew all your own beer. You're just saving some money by you know not getting another building. So, uh, in that case, uh, you know, alternating is more like leasing a car. So if, if contract brewing is like taking a cab where you just pay somebody to get you somewhere, you're not paying anything for the cab. If you, if you lease a car, you're, you've got to have your own uh, uh, car insurance. You've got to have your own – you buy your own fuel. You, you have to take care of maintenance. You need your own driver's license. You, uh, you steer the car yourself. You decide when you'll go, where you go, how fast you go, and, and where you end up. So um, 
the the thing is you just don't have to plunk down all that money to buy that car outright mm. uh so it's you know that's that's kind of the difference so it gives you all the control just um less of the upfront capital so i think that that's for me that's ideal because you start for less but uh you have full control and that's uh real important let's do this let's take a short break and when we come back we can uh, uh, wrap up this topic and maybe hit a couple of questions right after this when Blickman Engineering set out to design a great brewing stand, they knew it had to be strong, adaptable, and last for a lifetime. The top-tier brewing stand is now proudly available at BlickmanEngineering.com. It grows with your brewing skills and equipment. Start with 5-gallon coolers on its heavy-gauge stainless steel shelves. Then move all the way up to 30-gallon pots on the high-output burner tiers. Speaking of burners, the custom Blickman Engineering top-tier burners are extremely powerful, efficient, and amazingly quiet. They have safety stops to center your pot and they'll last a lifetime and won't rust the top tier brewing stand allows virtually infinite combinations from traditional gravity systems to two tiers to completely horizontal configure your stand the way you want and have the freedom to change it at any time in the future your brewing stand should adapt with you not force you to learn a new process visit blickmanengineering.com today to configure your top tier brewing stand and to find a local blickman retailer you'll be surprised with all the flexible features and the competitive price start brewing with blickman from the top tier and now northern brewer presents what if home brewers ruled the world ladies and gentlemen if you'll follow me i will lead you into the gallery area now the first piece up for sale today is a jameel zena chef original a bottle of 1997 vintage evil twin oh, i see a bidding for this one-of-a-kind piece will start at £7,000. And if you'll continue to follow me, ladies and gentlemen, I can show you a rather abstract piece from Bay Area brewer Justin Crossley. It's a German Doppelbach entitled Justin's Giant Bach. The brewer's notes here indicate that this beer had excellent mouthful. That's just a crazy dream. Superior customer service and the finest selection of home brewing goods for the future. A vial of White Labs yeast is the key to your best beer. When you open a vial of White Labs yeast, you're giving your beer its best chance for a perfect fermentation. In addition to their already incredible variety of yeasts, White Labs is proud to announce WLP 90, San Diego Super Yeast, now available year-round. WLP 90 is super clean, super fast fermenting, with low esters and has a neutral flavor and aroma profile. It's alcohol tolerant and highly flocculent. For more of the latest White Labs news, click over to whitelabs.com, where you can read reviews of yeast, learn in the lab section, and join the customer club. And if you should find yourself in San Diego, White Labs has a brand new training facility for craft brewers and home brewers alike. Whitelabs.com. Discover yeast, nutrients, enzymes, and more for commercial breweries, home brewers, and homebrew stores. White Labs. It's all in the vial. BN Army, Hop Tech has a great discount waiting for you. Do you often find it difficult to find specific specialty ingredients for your homebrew recipes? Well, listen to this. Hop Tech stocks 59 different grains to choose from, 39 varieties of pellet hops, and 8 kinds of whole leaf hops. And Hop Tech not only carries Y yeast and White Labs yeast for you, but also Fermentus, 04, 5, 6, 23, 33, and T58 Belgian yeast, plus Cooper's Nottingham and Windsor yeasts. Got your recipe ready to go? Pick up some great brew gear like new long and short sleeve shirts, games, and more. HopTech's new website is being updated every day with new items. If you don't see it, call the shop. They're open six days a week. BN Army and AHA members get a 10% discount, and active military personnel get 15% off. Visit HopTech.com today for great selection, great service, and a great discount. HopTech.com. To the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. All right. JP's just telling me an interesting story, which made me think of our fine sponsor. Uh, <laughs> I didn't need that. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man! You see, you see. I mean, that's obvious. I tell you, the two place, the two places in the world that crazy uh, happens is Florida and Japan. <laughs> yeah, and that's where the, that's the two like and Martinez crazy centers around Florida and Japan. They ju- it just does. All right. Well, speaking of crazy, thank you, Adam Adam and Eve dot com. Um, yeah, check check them out. They got uh, a lot of adult products there. They got adult toys, lubes, anything. Uh, almost anything there. Over 18,000 products. 18,000 products to innovate your uh, your sex life there. <laughs> Pardon me. That's a gassy day. In- inspire it even. Inspire. Yes, inspire. And uh, uh, since you're a fan of the show, and you uh, you can go to adamandeve.com. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, since you listen to the show, you don't really have to be a fan. <laughs> uh, you go to adamandeve.com. And you order uh, almost any one item, you can get it for fifty percent off by entering the code Jamel J A M I L at checkout. And when you do, they're going to allow you to choose three free adult DVDs. And you actually get to choose your own DVDs. They don't just you know throw you all the uh, goat fucker DVDs that they can't sell in there. Or like that, uh, you know what I hate? Softcore, the sheep shearing ones. Oh yes, softcore. The, the softcore with like Please. the like the diffuse filter on it. Like I'm watching <laughs> softcore? a softcore. Hey, who wants softcore? Like man? I'm watching a mo- uh, an episode of I'll, like I'll, Murder I'll, She Wrote. You yeah, know, I'll, it's all diffuse I'll, I'll and stare weird. Stare at my neighbors through their uh, through their sheer curtains if that's what I wanted. Yeah, right. So you get to choose your own DVDs. Uh, you can choose from genre, genres such as uh, <laughs> anal, amateur, Asian, big breasts, big butts, bisexual. Uh, chunky, co-eds, fetish, gay, interactive point of view, lesbian, milfs, uh, brewcaster on brewcaster, and uh, brewcaster on animal. Uh, the jizz are in rock candy in, <laughs> in brew straw. <laughs> yeah, screw straw. Bow, da, bow, ba, down, ba, down. Um, and uh, you, you get three free DVDs, plus you get a free mystery gift and uh, free shipping on your entire order. So it's a really good deal. You go there. You can uh, uh, get 50% off of any one item. You get to choose three free DVDs from a whole slew of categories. You get a free mystery gift. You get free shipping. Uh, you know, you buy one thing half off out of 18,000 items. I'm sure you're going to find something, uh, you know, pretty good deal. And uh, you can even shop on your mobile phone. Go to adamandeve.com and uh, uh, knock yourself out. You know, 18,000 things to innovate your uh, your enjoyment in the... Uh, in the uh, nether, yeah, yeah. And if, uh, you know, if, if your significant other <clears throat> or whatever uh, decides to bust on you for ordering, you know, all this right. kind of stuff, you're like, well, you know, hey, look. Just supporting the Brewing Network. Yeah. But supporting the Brewing Network, but also 25%. Um, we talked about this before a couple years ago. 25% of the of the uh, profit that Adam and Eve make, they donate to, like, AIDS awareness programs in oh, third wow. world countries. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's amazing. They do a lot of stuff like that. 25%. Right. Yeah. And it's they're still it. able to offer these rad deals to you. So right. it's, a, it's a great deal all around. You help you, you help us, you help um, people now know about AIDS. Suffering somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's a good company. We're, you know, uh, we have a lot of fun with the, the ads, but uh, you know, it's nice to, to have a very supportive company that's yeah. uh, trying to be good, uh, uh, good citizens and, uh, you know, provide good value. It's, well, it's, a, it's a tough thing. If you, know, you can't have fun with an ad like right. Adam and Eve... You can't have fun. <laughs> right. Well, it's like a heretic. We decide not to be good citizens and not provide good products. We just, uh, we're just we just trying to milk it for all that we can, yeah. and we'll just go from there. Your business uh, plan, I've seen it. It's, plan, it's yeah. a five-year. Five-year screw everybody. Yeah, because right when you get to the, the top, the, the people profits. are going to know right. that you're dicking everyone around. Right, right. right. I get and you. to escape before then, that's why I'm looking at the G6. If you're a good <laughs> escape vehicle, I could fly to another country. It's true. Where I can still get adamandeve.com online, though. Yes. All right. So All right. All right. Um, so uh, let's let's wrap up uh, talking about the uh, contract uh, alternating and the traditional. So traditional, that's that's like buying a car. I mean, you got to get your own building. You go out, you you buy the car, you buy the equipment. You uh, you know, again, you need your licensing, all that stuff. Um, I ha- actually had a comparison chart, uh, which I didn't bring with me, but. Um, uh, you know, there's positives and negatives about all three. Um, you know, I think the contract brew cheapest up front, but least control, uh, alternating and uh, traditional, uh, all the control you need, um, but more money up front, substantially more with the traditional, less with a, an alternating. 
and then um, the thing about an alternating is you're still you know you're a roommate in somebody's house and if they decide to sell the house or you know they can't make their mortgage payment on the house and and they get foreclosed on you're going with them you know so uh that and you know there's always uh uh you know having roommates you're going to have some sort of uh you know uh, uh issues at some point about sharing space or yeah. you know who who left the toilet dirty or, or who let the know, dogs out or who, really who let the dogs out absolutely yeah some people say you know the only ship that doesn't sail is a partnership <laughs> but what do i know ah uh, yes well and uh um so i you know i think those are the, the the key things on thinking about what type of brewery you're doing you know i think when people a lot of times think about type of brewery they're like oh you mean lager or ale or we're gonna make sour <laughs> beers or oh, i'm gonna make a killer ipa or you know something like that that's that's what they think when you're talking type of brewery but you really need to narrow it down and don't don't get confused with the uh you know the, just the brew pub and packaging or tasting rooms or thing like that it's you really need to think about your focus and what your focus is it's it's retail to consumers or it's you know wholesaling to distributors or or retailers and and size you, is important right oh absolutely i mean you have to you have to size it out in order to handle either of those models and the brew pub thing the thing is you know it's very hard to grow past a certain size with a brew pub you have to open more locations or you have to open a location um uh, where you can have a, a then a packaging brewery. I have some friends. They've got a, a brew pub, been running it 20 years, and now they're looking at opening a packaging facility so they can actually grow past that. Otherwise, you know, you're you know you get kind of a fixed uh, revenue model there where your size of your place is only going to support so much. And there's only so much you can uh, drive revenue there by by sales. So, um, you know, it's a it's a important thing to think about. All right. Uh, we got any questions in the chat? We do, actually. Um, this is from Quinn. Uh, he says, how do you pick a distributor? Is it hard to get a distributor to take your beer? Ah. Uh, we're going to do a whole show on distribution. Oh, we are? Is it next? Um, or later? It could be. Uh, it's number 11 on the list, so it's probably like, you know, another five shows out. <laughs> Uh, you you know, uh, I'll give you the, the well, basic basic answer now, but, you know, listen for that show coming up, because there is, I have a lot to say about distribution. He does have another question, if you want to jump to that. Um, well, uh, just real quick. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of small distributors that are looking for the hot new craft brewer that they can pick up, start you running, and, you know, distribute your beer in, a, in an area, and then if you be, prove to be successful... Uh, through a lot of your own efforts, mm. then they can sell your brand to a bigger distributor and make money off it that way. Sometimes really? the smaller ones don't necessarily want to grow that big. Yeah. Um, sometimes you know they'll 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 turn those over for for a big fat profit. That seems weird to me. To another distributor in their area, so that's a possibility. But you know, so so those those types of distributors are easy. If you have good beer and some sort of a story, and they like what it looks like, and your pricing is reasonable, then a lot of those small ones will pick you up. If you want to get with with the bigger distributors, it's very hard. Really? Yeah. They. I mean, they get so many people asking them to distribute beer. I, I go to these places and I see mountains of samples that people have sent, and they they're just like, "No, sorry, we can't." Uh, it's going to be hard from a distributor standpoint to focus your attention on everybody. Right. I mean, people, brands have to drop out. Yeah, uh, too many brands, you and know? you know they they're unable to properly support it. Okay, cool. Other question? Uh, I think we should save it for the next show. Uh, I think it's a good it's a good um, it's a good question about corporations and which ones and why um, S corp versus partnership and stuff like that. That well, next um, show is going to be all about locations. Oh. Okay. All right. So quickly on the corporations, it just depends on what other ones did you consider, and and why did you pick the, the one right. that you did, which I think is an S corp. Okay. Uh, no, I went with a C corp. All right. So S corp, you're still, you know, you yeah. have a whole a whole bunch of stuff that uh, uh, you're kind of could be screwed on, and LLC as well. It's cheap and easy to start as an LLC, so a lot of breweries do. Mm. The problem is if you really plan on growing and having stockholders and all that. 
C Corp is what you're going to end up being in, in the long run. So you end up having to transition. That's expensive. It's hard. So for me, it's just like I, I just started as a C Corp. So, um, you know, there's there's various reasons why. A lot of good – you Google which type of corp, and there's a lot of good information on the, on the web about that. All right. Sounds good. Let's wrap this up. Uh, as I said, the next show, if you're listening live, is uh, all about locations for your brewery. And, and, boy, there's a lot to think about in, in selecting a location. It's um, give, you, give you some headaches, I think. So uh, if you're listening uh, uh, to the podcast, then uh, in two weeks you're going to get the, the next segment of the Progasm, which is uh, all about location, like I said. If you enjoy this, uh, make sure you check out our sponsors, especially BlickmanEngineering.com. Good folks. They... Uh, they really are innovating your home brew and uh, uh, making making your brew day a lot more fun and uh, repeatable. Uh, so check them out. They've been sponsoring us for a long time, paying for the show so you don't have to. So the least you can do, send them an email and say, hey, thank you, Mr. John Lickman, for uh, uh, giving me some entertainment. And the most you can do is buy his products over and over again. <laughs> right, right. Buy yeah. them and break them and buy them again. Yeah. Buy a new uh, top tier every month. I think that, that he'd enjoy that. but. I think he doesn't really care too much if you do buy it or not. I think he just enjoys being uh, part of a great community. Yeah. Uh, if you do, too, go to the Brewing Network store and check out some of the goodies there because that goes to the bottom line of the Brewing Network. and really helps. Till then, Bruce Strong. Bruce Strong, everybody. <laughs>